What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of nemesis not something that we get to see super often though It's not really a super high value set either. It's just not something that we get to see so very excited to open it uh, Of course, we're gonna go through this as if it is a pack one pick one scenario So we're gonna do our best to figure out what our first round draft pick would be if we were actually drafting this set I did not draft during this time. So I have no clue uh, what's good and what's bad, but I will certainly do the best that I absolutely can. So, our first card, uh, oh, actually, I need to do that. Okay, uh, forgot that they uh, they had the old order. Uh, so, our first uh, common here is Parallax Dementia. So, it's an enchant creature for one and a black. It has fading one, so as it comes into play, uh, with one fade counter on it, at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a fade counter from it, and if you can't, you sacrifice it. So, the enchanted creature gets plus three, plus, plus two, excuse me, and then when the when this card leaves play, destroy the enchanted creature, and that creature cannot be regenerated. Essentially, what this means is you can either use this as like a swing in kind of win condition card, or uh, as a removal spell. So you can play this on a creature on your opponent's side of the field. Yes, it gets a boost, but uh, obviously the next turn it's just gonna it's just gonna die. So uh, it's an interesting card. I kind of like the lucrative aspect of it. I like that you can kind of do different things with it. Uh, again. Again, no clue if it's good or not, but we'll keep it here for now. Uh, Seal of Cleansing, an enchantment for one and a white. Uh, sacrifice it and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Very classic style card where it's going to destroy its artifact and enchantment hate. We see this all the time in things like disenchant. Uh, this is a very common ability, though in this case it is on an enchantment itself. So you can kind of play it and then let it sit. Uh, your opponent then kind of has to play around it. So I like that a little bit better uh, in some ways than cards like Disenchant, though I like uh, in instant speed removal obviously is better. Uh, so I don't like, card like cards like this early on, but they are definitely useful to have in your colors. Definitely a card that you would want, just not first pick. Uh, Trickster Mage is a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue. You can tap a blue uh, and tap it to discard a card from your hand and then tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land. Uh, interesting card. I don't really think this is super good. Uh, I, I like being able to tap certain things and I like that this doesn't just hit uh, creatures but it also hits artifacts and or lands, uh, which is all really good. It also untaps, not just taps. Uh, so pretty good effect. Uh, I Maybe it is good. I don't know. Uh, I feel like right now I'm still in for the Parallax Dementia even though that's not my favorite kind of card. Uh, but that might be a good card. I honestly just don't know. Uh, Lockalith Whelp is a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. Uh, it if it becomes blocked you may have it deal its combat damage. Uh, equal to its power to target creature. If you do, it deals no combat damage this turn. So you can basically decide if you want to deal this damage, if it's blocked, uh, to a different creature. Uh, interesting card. I'm not really sure that it's all that good because it is just a 1-1. It's nice to power up, I suppose. So maybe in that instance it's good, but not super exciting. <laughs> Uh, Harvest Mage is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. You can pay a green and tap it. Discard a card from your hand. Until the end of the turn, if you tap a land for mana, it produces 1 mana of any color instead of its normal type and amount. Obviously, this is really just good for fixing, so if you're in just kind of a jank all-color deck or multicolor deck, this is maybe the kind of card that you would like to have. It's a pretty expensive cost just for that. Discarding a card is a big deal in Limited. Uh, and so I don't know that I really like this, but maybe in that kind of a deck, you just kind of have to hedge your bets and go for it. Uh, Mind Swords is a sorcery for one and a black. If you control a swamp, you may sacrifice a creature instead of paying its mana cost. Each player removes two cards in his or her hand from the game. Not really a fan of this card. Uh, it just... It costs a little bit too much for something that isn't that important. Uh, your opponent gets to pick the cards and you also uh, have to remove two cards as well. So it just seems like it's kind of evening the odds a little bit, maybe, but it doesn't seem all that good. You also have to pay the mana and sacrifice or potentially or sacrifice a creature, not uh, pay the mana. And I, I don't know, not a huge fan. Uh, Defiant Falcon is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a white. It does have flying and then you can pay for and tap it. Search your library for a rebel card with converted mana cost 3 or less and put that card into play, then shuffle your library. Uh, obviously rebels are a really powerful uh, archetype. Being able to search them out and then uh, kind of build up this big team of rebels is really, really good. I have no clue 
uh, how great rebels are. I feel like if they're really good in this set, this is definitely a card that you want. I know they are a thing, but I just don't know what the best ones are or anything like that. I'd keep this here for now, but honestly, I just don't know. Uh, Days is an instant for one and a blue. You may return an island to your uh, hand. You control to its owner's hand, excuse me, instead of paying its mana cost. Counter target spell, unless its controller pays one of any color. This is a really good card in eternal formats. It is not so good in draft. It's not bad by any means. Uh, it's definitely a nice card to have in like a blue control style deck, but uh, unfortunately it just doesn't usually hit all that much. It's very easy to kind of play around and just leave up one mana. So not a huge fan for me. Uh, downhill charge is an instant uh, for two and a red. You may sacrifice a mountain instead of paying its mana cost. Uh, target creature gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of mountains you control. This is a really interesting combat trick. I actually really like this. Uh, being able to sack a mountain to play it is useful because it means it's basically always turned on in a red deck. Uh, three mana, not bad either for this ability, so I could see playing that. Uh, but that's really, really powerful to be able to boost a creature by however many mountains you control, especially if you have a lot. Not a first pick by any means, but not bad. Uh, Treetop Bracers is an enchant creature for one and a green. The enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and can be blocked only by creatures with flying. Not a huge fan of this, really don't like enchant creatures, and this really doesn't give you enough of a buff uh, to make it all that worth it, in my opinion. Uh, Phyrexian Driver is a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a black. It comes into play. All other mercenaries get plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Don't really like this either, to be honest. It doesn't. I don't know if there's a lot of mercenaries in this set, so I feel like it's not going to be that good. Uh, there are probably a few, and if you have a lot of these, maybe it's okay, but 3 mana for a 1-1 one, one that boosts all other mercenaries just until the end of the turn seems really bad. Just not enough upside. Uh, our first uncommon here is a 4-4 Flowstone Thopter. It does cost 7 mana, but you can pay 1 and it gets plus 1, minus 1, and gains flying until end of turn. Obviously, you can activate that multiple times, which is really nice if you just really want to pump this. It's a really lucrative card. It's one that you can play in a lot of different uh, archetypes because it is colorless and I like that. The only downside, it is 7 mana for a 4-4. Uh, yes, you can buff it, which is good. It's a mana sink, which I also like, but really doesn't seem all that great. Uh, it does have flying though, so maybe it is a little better than the cards we already have. Uh, if you can give it flying, obviously, it's going to really, really deal some damage. So I think in that case, I'm kind of convincing myself so far that might be the pick. Uh, Angelic Favor is an instant for three and a white. If you control a planes, you may tap an untapped creature you control instead of paying its mana cost. Play Angelic Favor only during combat. Uh, and you put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying into play, remove it from the game at the end of the turn. This is essentially a combat trick, uh, but it is really, really lucrative. I like that you get a 4-4 out of it. Uh, I don't really like that it ends, uh, that it leaves play at the end of the turn. Uh, and so for that reason, I think I'd rather have the Thopter so far. Uh, Mog Alarm is a sorcery for one and two red. You may sacrifice two mountains instead of paying its mana cost. And then you put two 1-1 one, one red goblin creature tokens into play. I actually really like this. Uh, in a red deck, it's great uh, just being able to spit out a bunch of tokens, especially off of one card. And then being able to sacrifice mountains instead of paying its mana cost means that you can do this and potentially something else in the same turn. Uh, I don't know if it's better than the Thopter, to be honest, so I'm going to keep it there for now and we'll see what we get. And then our rare is Sevi's Valor. I hope I am saying that correctly. Uh, instant for two and a white. If you control a planes, you may tap an untapped creature you control instead of paying its mana cost. All damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn is dealt to you instead. Do not like this card. Really, really bad in my opinion. So not even really worth considering. I honestly think Mog Alarm is probably the card I would go with. Though Flowstone Thopter definitely leaves you a little more open. So I could kind of see going either way. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.